Hello and welcome to Body Balance The Basics. This work is really the result of 14 years worth of research, which began after the time when I gave up riding in despair and frustration. I'd always looked at riders who were much more talented than myself and really envied them and wondered how the heck they were able to ride so beautifully and produce such beautiful results from the horses. Occasionally too, I'd get it just right and I'd think, hey, that's fantastic. The only problem was I never knew what I'd done and I was never able to go out and do it again. Now this sent me off on a quest to really try and work out how the interaction between the rider and the horse works, how I could learn to do it well consistently and how I could teach other people to do the same. This tape is about the fundamental ABCs of riding. Now, like me, I'm sure you're familiar with all those expressions that people say about sit up straight, stretch your leg down, push your heels down, relax, sit deep, use your back, all those kind of things. And I used to assume that if I tried to do those and it didn't work, it was because I was stupid. Now I think it's because those things are really not the fundamental organizing principles of riding. If they were, they work for everybody. Think of it this way, if riding was a pie and the pie was cut into certain pieces and we looked at the pie crust and we saw the piece that says keep your heels down, the piece that says stretch your leg down, the piece that says relax and we thought that was what it's about. What I've done, in effect, is to take off the pie crust and look underneath it to all that mishmash of ingredients and to separate out the onions from the carrots to the meat and see what it is that's really in there. Now, you're about to learn here the pieces that I've come up with. These, I think, really are the fundamental organizing principles of riding, and they work for people regardless of their young, old, short, tall, fat, thin, regardless of their body type. Bear in mind that these tapes were shot in actual riding lessons. Everything you see here was spontaneous. We never worked from a script. And in particular, I never ever put words into the riders' mouths. So any of the feedback they gave me really was what they said on the time and how they responded as the lesson went on. So what we'll do here is we'll go to the riding arena and we'll meet Sandra, who's our first rider. So this is Sandra, who's really quite a novice rider. She's riding Kashmir, who's a 15-year-old, three-quarter thoroughbred, who has in his day done medium dressage and I think fox hunter jumping. But right now, he's relegated to the realms of giving confidence to people who really need it. As we look at Sandra riding here, it's obvious we're looking at someone who is a fairly novice rider. And we're seeing a picture you'll often see with a fairly novice rider. So the things to notice are that there's a lot of backwards-forwards movement of her backside. And despite that, the horse really isn't going very much forward. Also, if we look at the basic lineup of her body, we can just check out what's going on by asking ourselves the question, if we took the horse out from underneath her by magic, how would she land on the riding arena? Can you answer that for us, Sandra? How would you land? I'm sure I would land on my backside. Yes, that's right. You'd land on your backside. So there's no way there. You'd just plop down on your feet. You'd land on your backside. No, on my backside. Sandra, let's have you take trot rising. Just going round the edge. OK. If you panic and freak, I'll come and catch you. Right. He'll stop anyway. Yeah, see if you can go faster. So as Sandra goes into trot here, the loss of impulsion or the lack of impulsion is even more apparent. And her lineup stays where she'd land on the arena on her backside if we took her horse out from underneath her by magic. As you see her from the side here, also just notice the shape of her back. Just notice how much backside you see out behind her and how hollow her back really is. Okay, so Sandra, you come on back through to walk. 
Come on up the centre line here and let's reorganise things a bit. So, Sandra, if you had little extensions on the bottom of your seat bones or little flashlights shining down from your seat bones, what direction would they point in? Would it be straight down to the ground, forward towards his front feet or back towards his back feet? Back toward his back feet. OK. And as we look at Sandra, we can see how hollow her back is here and it makes sense that her seat bones would indeed be pointing backwards. So. First thing we need to do to reorganize this is to take your legs here, Sandra, and lift them up over the front of the saddle. Can you do the other one too? And I want you to scoop your backside towards the front of the saddle and really feel like you bring your seat bones much more underneath you. So what direction would you have them pointing in now? Down. That feels like down. Feels down. Okay, well, we'll check it out after I've brought your legs down. So. As I take Sandra's leg here to bring it down, I'm going to take hold of the flesh on the underside of her thigh, pull it round to the back, and put her leg on the saddle from the back towards the front. So I keep this flesh back here. And then we'll just arrange the stirrup on the ball of her foot. OK, let's do the other side. Sandra's just told her here that this shift in her position begins to give her a feeling of strain in the muscles of the lower back here. And I suspect what we're really talking about is a feeling of unfamiliarity. In my experience, hollow-backed riders are the ones who tend to have back pain. And I've had many people come in riding with Sandra's kind of body type, change themselves to align their pelvis more like this, and find that riding no longer hurts. Whenever somebody's back is hollow as well, they almost inevitably bump. And most hollow-backed riders are nervous. Is that true of you? Yes. You, you'd say that was true. Yes. And in the posture that Sandra's body's been in, it's almost inevitable that she wouldn't feel safe. It isn't a safe posture. So, what we're wanting to do here, Sandra, is to have your seat bones pointing straight down. And it's even a little bit more under you that your pelvis has to come. This change is going to feel colossal to you. Now, what's going to be difficult for Sandra now is to bring her lower leg back underneath her so we can get this ideal shoulder to hip to heel line 